Welcome to Frascati, Italy, the headquarters of ESRIN, the Earth Studies Division of the European Space Agency. We are here for the 2015 Planetary Defense Conference. five-day conference, hundreds of presentations and posters from people, researchers and policymakers from all over the world, from many different disciplines, because everything is involved with the threat of near-Earth objects. As an infrared space telescope, Neowise was able to, d to discover about 34,000 asteroids. But now we've, we've basically improved upon this to really specialize in detecting and characterizing near-Earth objects. There's a lot uh, more search capability to find asteroids that might pose a risk to Earth. The thinking about how we deal with this hazard from government down to scientists working at telescopes has advanced across the board. I basically produced a map uh, that shows the future impact locations of the asteroid that we currently know of that can be dangerous for the Earth. And what I did was extend that view into the future. So uh, we can now look until 2100. And I'm very happy that I got the chance to uh, present here, actually. We've got a, a nice meteorite example here. And you can see this black area is the fusion crust, where the outside of the meteorite was essentially burned by the atmosphere. I'm Kate Howells. I'm here with the Planetary Society. All of you who are experts in, in various different fields contributing to planetary defense uh, consider these organizations as a resource for a, a coordinated uh, global public outreach effort. Take one for my daughter. Threaded through all of this is an exercise, a simulation, uh, basically role playing, and we were given a scenario that was pretty dire about an asteroid, a killer asteroid, that was headed toward our planet. We tried to craft this in a way that. Uh, reflects how this might be presented if it was a real threat. I just want to emphasize this is an exercise. You'll see it marked on those sheets. Any people who are webcasting this, this is an exercise. This is not a real threat, okay? The asteroid is roughly 140 to 400 meters across. It's predicted to pass very close to the Earth on September the 3rd of 2022, which is just over seven years from now. The media group will be led by Dr. Bruce Betts, so if you could stand up, give us a big wave for those who haven't, who aren't familiar with the work of Dr. Bruce Betts. I knew that was coming. <laughs> so, I so should have been ready for that. So the thing we keep hearing from the leaders of the conference is that this exercise, the simulation, it's just pretend. In spite of it being imaginary, emotions run pretty high. It becomes very dramatic. In all likelihood, we will need more than one launch vehicle to attempt the deflection. So all you're asking for is more money. That I don't know. What it I'm seems saying. to me that you guys are always got your hand I'm out. Saying in. We've spent Even the billions. risk is only one percent. This object is not a local problem. It potentially could be catastrophic. Uh, six deflection, uh, kinetic impactor deflection missions are about to be launched this month. The missions will reach there around March of 2020, and they need to deliver 20 millimeters per second to move it off of the Earth. There's a compelling evidence that the six launches not only will not be successful, they'll create more death and destruction. We keep hearing different numbers. We just heard earlier in the press release that it's 400 meters, or it could be. But now we're being told it's 250 at most. That makes a big difference. There's about 80 million people that could be impacted by this. Whose interests do our politicians serve? <laughs> <laughs> Basically what we've done is we've broken into uh, groups, and so the groups are, one is uh, political leaders, other is political leaders who's not in the danger zone, and then we have members of the public who are in the danger zone, and finally we have uh, a, sort of a media and a risk communication group. You're not getting the detailed information that the world leaders are getting right now. 
Uh, it's not all about rocket science uh, in uh, planetary defense. There are a lot of other concerns and issues that have to be dealt with. The asteroid, the pretend asteroid, has been impacted by pretend kinetic impactors that have changed its orbit but broke off a chunk in the meantime and it's still fairly uncertain where that's going to hit. At this point they can't narrow that down anymore. Right? It's complete chaos and we're all going to die. Oh my god. Actually I'm not sure how you're saying that. I mean it's at this point we have no clarity on exactly where. I mean it's kind of... We have no clarity but this, if it hits on land it's a, a localized point-like disaster. Do you need more time or have you, are you just about to done? Yeah, ten. Right, ten. Okay. ten. I guess we stopped right before the, the asteroid actually hit. However, we know that it is going to hit in a very, very populated part of the world. There is a very fine line between making the situation better and making the situation worse. Sometimes doing nothing may be better than doing something, yes. even though doing something feels better. So I think that was an important lesson for everyone involved. It's amazing how much collaboration, how many new projects and new ways of understanding come out of just the fact that everybody is in the same room. Five days of uh, defending the planet here in Frascati, Italy. Uh, Bruce, how do you think it went? I think it went very well. It's uh, great to bring together all the different aspects of the near-Earth asteroid threat community from finding to tracking to characterizing to deflecting to coordinating the international aspects of it all in one conference. Arrivederci. Ciao, Bella. Ciao. <laughs> <laughs>